This is an 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, and this is a 14-inch Dobsonian telescope. They both use a big mirror to collect light and send it to the eyepiece to give you a closer look at objects in space. This one costs about $700 brand new, and this one, it's over $3,000. In this video, I'm gonna take a picture of the moon, the planets, and even a nebula using these telescopes, even though they technically weren't meant for it. Even though this one doesn't track the sky, you can still use it for astrophotography. I'll show you some different ways you can take pictures with your Dobsonian telescope using whichever camera you have. Your phone, a DSLR or mirrorless camera, or better yet, a dedicated astronomy camera like this one. To start, we'll take a picture through the telescope eyepiece. The eyepiece is where the light from the primary mirror is concentrated and you can change the magnification of your view. But instead of looking through the telescope eyepiece, we'll put a camera right up to it. Okay, what should we shoot? first. How about the planet Venus? And if we have time, Mars. I'll use my phone for this one and it's not going to be easy. The hardest part about taking pictures of planets with your phone is aligning the camera lens on your phone with the center of the eyepiece. I'm using a 32 millimeter low magnification eyepiece to make the process a little easier, although it will make the planet look pretty small. I could use a higher magnification eyepiece for a better view, but it'll be way harder to get a clean shot. Okay, I'll, I'll try for you. We can make everything easier by using a smartphone adapter to hold the camera steady. If you don't have an adapter or you lost yours, try not to lose your mind. This takes a steady hand and a lot of practice. To focus on the planet, it's the same process as if you were viewing it through the eyepiece. So get the planet roughly in focus first using your eye. Now we can align the camera lens on the smartphone with the eyepiece and switch the camera over to pro mode so we can have control over settings like exposure length, f-stop, and ISO. In general, you'll need to bump up the ISO setting for a brighter image and make sure that the shot is quick enough to not blur the planet. Use the delay timer if possible, but you'll need to be quick because the planet is moving through the eyepiece very fast. Here's the picture of Venus I took with my phone and the settings I used to get it. Not bad for a visual telescope and a phone, right? Let's see if we can get an even better photo using a mirrorless camera attached directly to the telescope. Again, there's no tracking on the telescope itself, but this camera will give us better control over the camera settings themselves. This time, my camera is attached directly to the telescope with no eyepiece in between. So you can think of this Dobsonian telescope as a giant lens right now, a 1200 millimeter f 5.9 lens to be exact. With a more secure connection, we can focus on taking a picture with a faster exposure time. This will give us a better chance at getting a crisp shot using the 10 second delay timer on the camera. We can really dial in the focus now too thanks to the five times live view mode on the camera itself. Here's the photo of Venus I took using my mirrorless camera. The process was easier, but the lack of magnification offsets the advantage of a steadier shot. I think we can do better. Okay, time for the big guns. This time we'll use a dedicated astronomy camera and a Dobsonian telescope that's nearly twice the size as the first one. This is a 14 inch telescope, meaning that it can collect even more light and show even more objects in the night sky. If that weren't enough, this one has a motor that can find and track objects. I can use my phone to tell this telescope telescope to point to Venus and it will do it on its own. It uses an Altaz base, but it can keep objects in view for longer periods of time, even at higher magnification. This means that I can take a video of the moon or planets and get an even better photo. Here is what my video of the planet Venus looks like, and here is the image I got out of it. This is a great way to take detailed shots of the moon as well, and the exact process some of the best solar system photographers use to take their photos. There's plenty of tools to run a camera like this, but the ASI Air mobile app is probably the easiest. Just look at the planet Venus on my tablet. This is the new way to enjoy your telescope without processing anything. I moved the telescope over to Mars next, and it's looking pretty small this summer from our vantage point on Earth. You don't need a 14 inch daub to do this kind of stuff, just a dedicated astronomy camera and the software to run it. Do you know what that is? It's Venus. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Is it Mars? No. It's not Venus? No. Venus would be a crescent. Is it? It's not Mars. It is Mars. It looks orange here, but it looks white up there. Yeah. Hi. No, that's Venus. You're, so you can see Venus up there. 
but it's Mars that you're looking at right now. I'll point it at Venus oh. now. Well, yeah, yeah. That's why it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. So we're pointed at the star Vega right now, very, very bright star. But I know that nearby is the Ring Nebula, which is a deep sky astrophotography target. But we're going to try it with a Dobsonian telescope, even if this one can track. It's really not meant for that. Deep sky. 57. Go to. Wow, this is crazy. So I just keep cranking up the gain, which is similar to ISO if you're used to a DSLR camera. And you can see the lots of stars here. I'm recording this video. Now using that, I'm going to move the scope around to see if we can spot the Ring Nebula. Oh, <gasps> it's there. Oh my God, it's there. So there's the Ring Nebula live. Uh, if you consider two frames per second live, this is a live view of the Ring Nebula through a Dobsonian telescope. Oh my goodness. You've got to be kidding me. The last object I photographed was the moon. It wasn't that I wanted to save it for last, it just didn't rise until after 1 a.m. For this one, I went back to the eight inch daub and attached my mirrorless camera. This is the type of project anyone can take on and the results can be incredible. Sometimes the simplest moments are the ones you remember most. So to all the Dobsonian telescope owners out there, give astrophotography a try this summer. I think you'll be pretty surprised at what you can do.